Making selections on the upright was nice and straightforward. There were a lot of flat faces and straight edges to make defining tool orientation very simple. But that's not always the case, as with this hockey skate adapter that was designed for a player with a leg length discrepancy. The adapters are mostly non-planar surfaces and complex edges rather than planar faces and straight edges, which will give more of a challenge when making selections. I'm going to focus on the top front truck, so I'll hide everything else for now. In the manufacturing workspace, I've already roughed out one side and finished the horizontal face on the flange. Now I want to finish the rest of the side, which is largely non-planar surfaces with two planar faces at odd angles. The upper angled face and fillet look like a parallel would work well, so I'll create one and select an eighth inch ball end mill. In the geometry tab, I'll start with defining a machining boundary. It looks like I'm going to need tool orientation to avoid colliding with the flange. However, none of the geometry lends itself nicely to defining the z-axis for this operation. I can try using the angled face on the other side of the part, but that doesn't give me much control over the tool path and it doesn't look like a great angle for the tool. Instead of using part geometry to define this z, I'll create and use some work geometry. Going back to the design workspace, I'll activate the top front truck so all the geometry I create is stored within that component. Under the construct menu, there are options to create planes, axes and points and each command is basically named the workflow to create it. I might want to try a plane through two edges and choose the edges on either side of the radius. Fusion 360 gives me an error. Lines must intersect or be parallel. So even though these were straight edges, they can't generate a work plane. I can try using a plane through three points instead, this time choosing three points on the geometry that will generate a plane angled in the direction I want. This looks pretty good, but I'll create another plane just in case. This time I'll choose plane at angle, choose a straight edge, and then use the slider to eyeball the angle of the plane. If I had a specific angle I wanted the plane to be at, I could enter that directly. Note that the plane will lie along the selected edge. So if I don't like how the plane is tilted here, I can choose this edge instead so that the plane is straight relative to the part. Now that I have a few work planes to try out, I'll head back in the manufacturing workspace. This time I'll use a parallel but enable tool orientation and select the first work plane to define the Z axis. Zooming out a little, I can see that the Z is facing the opposite of the way I would like. When using work planes or edges, Fusion 360 doesn't always know where the part geometry is. I can use the arrow tip or the checkbox in the dialog to flip the Z axis to point the correct direction. I don't need to define an X or Y direction since this is handled when the code gets posted. The post processor knows the direction that Z needs to point and then finds an X and Y the machine is capable of that results in the correct Z. That being said, there is a parameter within the toolpath that's driven off the X axis, pass direction. Based on the current X direction, the parallel passes aren't going to be great for the geometry. I can adjust the pass direction in the passes tab as usual. However, if I don't know exactly what the angle will be to be optimal, I can always control the passes by redefining the x-axis in the direction I would like my passes to go. I can duplicate this parallel and then select the other work plane as the z-axis to compare the toolpath results against. I'll also make the same x selection so the passes point in that direction. To compare the toolpaths, I typically select the constrained orbit tool from the bottom of the screen and rotate so that I can see the toolpath and the tool is vertical. It looks like the first parallel gives slightly more clearance and blends more nicely with the flat face. One other use for work geometry and 3 plus 2 toolpaths is using tilting to avoid cutting along the center line of a ball end mill when running finishing passes. 
Since the center of the tool technically has a radius of zero, the surface speed near the center is always near zero, which leads to reduced tool life and poor surface finish. I can apply this principle to finish the top surface of the top front truck. 20 degrees tends to give a good result, although optimal angle varies with material and setup. Using a 20 degree work plane, I can create a parallel pass to finish the surface so that the tool is running with side tilt or along the axis that the tilt is happening around. Running the tool with a lead angle is also acceptable, but it is recommended to avoid a lag angle. The resulting toolpath keeps the tool engaged up the radius away from the centerline of the tool. In addition to using work geometry to help with multi-axis toolpath definition, I can also use sketch geometry on that work plane to contain the toolpath. For example, I can sketch a rectangle that approximately contains the geometry I want to finish in the next parallel. Then, while creating that parallel operation, I can select the sketch geometry as the machining boundary. This can help when geometry is difficult to select or if the projection onto the selected tool orientation coordinate system doesn't generate the toolpath as expected. In short, the post processor takes care of the X and Y orientation calculations so that all I have to worry about is defining the correct Z axis and making sure the pass direction is appropriate.